For those of you who are taking listening and speaking this fall semester of 2020, I want to welcome you to this class, listening and speaking. Uh, this is going to be a 10 hour a week class. It's basically one class that consists both of listening and speaking. So we'll be meeting two hours a day, Monday through Friday. At the time of this recording, our class is scheduled to meet from 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the morning. Today I want to create a short video that discusses some of the mobile apps that uh, are going to be, I think, useful to you uh, throughout the semester. Some of the apps we talk about today are going to be, I think, very much required for you to really get the most out of this class. Other apps will be less important. Maybe you might even find them more useful in other classes, but I think it's worth mentioning. So uh, getting started here, uh, rem remember that as students here at the university, you're going to have access to a suite called Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365, if you're not familiar with this service, uh, you're going to have an account. You're going to have basically a, an email that is part of the Microsoft 365 suite. And it's basically, basically going to be the, um, the email is going to be alyourid at edu.ua.mx. This is going to be essentially your username. The first time you enter into the account, you'll have a temporary password that will allow you to get in. Um, if anybody has questions about how to get in and access your account in 365, uh, let me know. Uh, this will be something that we talk about uh, the first day of class. The first day of class begins August 24th, 2020, and our course will last 16 weeks through uh, December 11th. All right, so let's jump into this here. Again, let me just uh, show you here. If you type in portal.office.com, this is gonna take you to the main page of, of Microsoft 365. Now, I am referring to this page as Microsoft 365. You may see it uh, as Office 365. They're currently going through a name change what used to be called Office 365 now is called Microsoft 365. Essentially, it's the same uh, website, just a different name. Now, you'll notice some of the apps that are included by default under Microsoft 365. You'll see Outlook, Calendar, OneDrive. You'll see the Word, Excel, PowerPoint Suite, OneNote, SharePoint, Teams, Sway, Forms, Yammer, and I have also listed here Planner and To Do. Some of these apps you can choose. There are, there are actually more apps available if you want to add additional apps to your own specific uh, installation of Office or, or Microsoft 365. That's up to you. We're not going to talk about all of these apps, but we'll talk about the ones that I think are going to be most useful. Beginning with Teams. All right, now Microsoft Teams, this service is a little bit different than some of the others because whether or not you're on a cell phone or your desktop computer, Microsoft Teams basically runs on a dedicated app. So on your phone, we'll have to install an app, which basically uh, is what you need to do with any of the apps. They basically have a dedicated apps for each of the services that they offer on a cell phone. But even on a desktop computer, if you're accessing Microsoft Teams, you'll need to uh, install a dedicated app. But again, today's video, we're going to focus mainly on mobile apps. So if you go to Play Store, and I'm going to be talking about uh, Android phones, but essentially this is going to apply to iPhone as well. You'll be able to access these same apps using your iPhone. But if you type in Teams, the very, cert, the very first option here, Microsoft Teams, this is going to be the app that you'll need to install on your cell phone. Once you've installed Microsoft Teams on your cell phone, you're going to go into the app. And you'll notice along the bottom of your screen, from left to right, you'll have the following options. Activity, Chat, Teams, Assignments, 
calendar, and then a more option which will bring up a menu with additional apps. All right, so let's talk about each one of these in turn. Beginning with activity, activity is simply a feed that will show, depending on whatever you're doing, any messages that you receive in any uh, part of Microsoft Teams, this activity will appear here as a feed. Um, chat, we'll, we're going to come back to chat, but essentially uh, a chat is how you can contact each other directly uh, privately instead of maybe using an email you can send each other a chat and again this is basically a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, with someone in your team clicking on teams here we have uh, this is where you're going to access the team for our purposes for our class you're going to be accessing the team called listening and speaking so I'm going to be adding all of you to this team and so when you go into Teams for the first time you should al already be able to access the team called Listening and Speaking. You'll notice that we have different channels. A channel is basically a section within the team and you'll notice that the first channel called General, if you open that up you'll see three different options along the top of your screen. Posts, Files, and a more tab. So let's talk about each of those three tabs again within the channel called general. Under post you'll see basically where uh, all of us have access to leaving a, a message. It's basically a forum that the entire team can access. So here it's very important to mention that anything that you share in this post in this area in this space the whole the whole class can see so I would recommend that you not send anything if, that you think is uh, needs to be private or if you want to send me a message that you don't want anyone else to see then you're going to want to use the chat feature okay so be careful about how you use posts and how you use chat everyone is encouraged to use both you can use posts but make sure that, again, you're posting something that you don't mind everyone, um, everyone really seeing. And this is going to be perfectly um, acceptable when, let's say, that you have questions that you think others will benefit from. Um, and you, know, you have questions maybe that you know some of your classmates also share. Then, by all means, use this space so that when I respond, everyone else, again, can benefit from receiving the answer. All right, so along the uh, top, well, before we go to files, let me back up. Um, you can share basically anything from your phone. Uh, you can upload images. You can upload video, text, of course, any file attachments from your OneDrive if you're using OneDrive. We'll discuss that in a minute, but under post, it's not just limited to text. There are many different types of content that you can share in this space. All right, now let's go to files. Files is going to be where uh, you can access any files and folders for this class uh, for this semester. So if I am uploading any content, any information, maybe a PDF file, a Word document, maybe we're working collectively together on a, a Word document, this is where you can find this information under the file section. Again, the whole class can access this information. Okay, so this is under files. Now moving on to the more tab. If you click on the More tab, you'll see a drop-down menu that includes a class notebook, assignments, Flipgrid, which we'll come back to in a minute, and Trello, which we'll also discuss here in a few minutes. Now, Class Notebook is one of the apps that's in Microsoft Teams that we're not going to be using for this class. But I will say that OneNote is a very important app and a useful app that you might want to use in some of your other classes. And you might even decide to use it in our class, although it's not a requirement. I won't be using it uh, for sharing content, but certainly OneNote is one of those apps and that you, I think, 
will uh, that you could benefit from using and it's quite possible that maybe you have another instructor this semester that will use the app uh, in, in your class. Okay, but again in this class we won't be using Class Notebook. Now under Class Notebook you'll see Assignments. If you go into Assignments you'll see that uh, different activities are divided into Assigned and you have others that have been graded. Essentially in the Assignments tab you'll find any activity where you re receive a grade that will appear in this section. All right, so maybe there, there's an activity that we're currently working on that you have not received a grade yet on. This will appear under the Assigned tab, under the Assigned category. And then under the Graded category, this is where, again, once you receive a grade, that's where you'll be able to find that information. It's going to be important throughout the semester that you constantly check to make sure that you're uh, fully aware of the grades that you're receiving for the activities and that you know how well you're doing uh, throughout the semester. Of course, when you have questions about your grades, things come up that you uh, have doubts about, then this would be when you could send me a chat and we can try to clarify any doubts that you might have. But the Assignments tab, this is where you can find that information uh, within Microsoft Teams. All right, so before we get into Flipgrid and Trello, that's basically what you're going to find here in the three tabs along the top uh, of your screen, posts, files, and more. Now the last thing I'll talk about here, you'll see that there is a bell icon at the top of your screen, top right hand corner of your screen. If you click on that icon, you'll see two options. One that says all new messages in this channel and a second option that says replies to my messages only. So you can decide on how you want to receive notifications within Microsoft Teams. And this is where you can make that selection. This is up to you how, uh, again, how you want to receive those notifications. All right, so basically that is what you'll find in the general tab in the Teams called Listening and Speaking. You'll find other channels that we'll talk about later that are identified as Room 1, Room 2, and so on. We'll talk more about that later. This is going to be more for uh, when we get into the class. You'll be dividing up into teams and working in different rooms with some of your classmates. We'll talk more about that uh, as we get into the class. All right, so... This is Microsoft Teams, again, an app that you can install on your phone that I highly recommend that you do install on your phone. You may decide that you're, you access may, most of the class on your desktop computer, which is perfectly fine, but I think just having access to Microsoft Teams and being able to receive messages uh, basically from wh wherever you're, you're located, I think you'll find helpful. And again, I think... Uh, this is going to be one of the main apps that I highly recommend that you use throughout the semester. Now, if we go back to the main page in Microsoft Teams on your phone and we look along the bottom of your screen, next to Teams you'll see an icon called Assignments. If you click on Assignments, you may need to indicate the class or the team. Um, and, but if you do, this will take you directly to the Assignments option. This is the same space that we accessed earlier under the General tab under More and then clicked on Assignments. This is just a direct link to Assignments and this might be the easiest way for you to access this information if you're interested in checking your grade. This is just a direct way of doing that. If you click on Calendar, we're, we're going to be using a different calendar for this class that I'll talk about a little bit more when we get into Trello. But this calendar, essentially, we won't use because it only is for online meetings. We're going to have an online meeting during our normal class, Monday through Friday, from 8 o'clock in the morning till about 9.40 in the, in the morning. And those meetings will appear here as they are scheduled they will appear here um, again we're not going to need to use this calendar with the Microsoft Teams 
uh, simply because it only relates to the online meetings. But all the online meetings you can access from your phone or from a computer. And uh, to access a live meeting, you'll need to be in Teams under the General tab. Under Posts, this is where you're going to find a link that will allow you to join the online meeting. Okay, so again, online meetings, these are going to be our live meetings in real time, Monday through Friday from 8 to 9.40 in the morning. If you go into Microsoft Teams under the General tab under Posts, you'll find a link that will allow you to enter into the online meeting. Again, you can access online meetings from your phone and or from the desktop computer. This is going to be very much dependent on the equipment that you have and uh, your level of com uh, comfortability depending on if you would rather access this with a mobile device or a desktop computer. Okay, so these are live meetings and that's pretty much it. Under the more option there are different apps and uh, we won't really need to use those apps for the purposes of this course. All right, so we've talked about all of the, the different options, activity, chat, teams, assignments, calendar in Microsoft Teams. Okay, and we talked about the general tabs and how to access posts, files, and assignments. Now let's talk about two more apps that I think are going to be useful. And if we look at Let's go to Play Store. If you click Flipgrid, Flipgrid is going to be another app that I think is going to be useful for you to install on your mobile device. Flipgrid, if you install this on your phone, this will give you an app that looks something like this if you're looking at the video. I've created a, they, they refer to it as a group. It's called Listening and Speaking. So listening, speaking, this is a, essentially a space where you can find videos. And really what Flipgrid is, if you're not familiar with uh, this service, is basically a way for, let's say, I, I can create a video and then you can respond to my videos. It's very much like a forum, a text forum, like if you post a text and someone can reply to your text, you can do the same thing but only with uh, video. All right, so this is nice because we can talk about, I can create a topic and you guys can reply to my videos. All right, so since, since this is a listening and speaking class, I think this is a really good service that's gonna serve our purposes quite well because we can all create videos and respond to each other's videos in kind of a forum fashion using the service. And so, you can access this service through a browser, but again, having a dedicated app on your cell phone, if you have space on your cell phone, uh, it's going to be, I think, quite useful. If you have problems with adding a lot of these apps that we're talking about here today, most of them can be accessed, um, you can access them using your browser. Okay, so you can just go to the browser as you normally would uh, on a desktop computer, access it on your phone. And for the most part, you should be able to, to do and have access to the same information, again, via your browser. All right, so Flipgrid. Flipgrid is another app that I would recommend that you install on your phone. The third app that I think is going to be the most important, this is going to uh, be a Trello. Okay, so if you go to Play Store again, type in Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Install Trello on your app, on your phone rather, and we have a Trello called LNS. LNS, listening and speaking. And if you go into the Trello app under LNS, this is called a board. So we're, we have one board that's going to include basically all of the content for this course. So this is one of the reasons why I'm not going to be using OneNote. I'm essentially going to create all of the content for the class in this board, in this Trello board called LNS. And you'll notice if you go into 
this board for the first time and you scroll from left to right, you'll see that we have boards for each week. All right, so you'll be able to see kind of what we're doing week to week. And each of these cards, we have cards within boards. All right, so each card is kind of a either an activity or it could even be a set of activities that are related. Um, you'll notice that each card has a date. All right, so these dates, if you go into the three tabs at the top right hand corner of your screen and you type in calendar this is going to give you a view of the same content from the cards but in a calendar view and you'll see here what's due you'll you'll see you'll have access to the different cards based on the dates and you'll be able to scroll up and down through the the calendar by date and uh, access these different cards through the calendar view. All right, so what I like about Trello is it gives you different ways of viewing the same course content. If you're more comfortable accessing the content week to week, great. If you wanna access the calendar view and if that makes more sense to you and you wanna see what we're doing each day, then this view might be more useful to you. All right, but this is, Basically, where you can see what we're doing day to day, this is a tool that I'm going to be using as I plan and implement and evaluate what we're doing throughout the semester. This will also help me as well as your instructor. But again, this is going to be very helpful to you if you really want to see what's coming up, what we've done in the past. And uh, we'll talk more about Trello and you'll become more familiar with it if you're not already. Um, but there are going to be some other ways that you can access this course content, organize this information based on different fields and, and so on. But again, I would uh, highly recommend that you go into this, uh, this app, Trello, and make sure you access LNS. We'll create a team and you'll have access to all this information. And again, I think it's going to be a, a good way to organize the course content. All right, um, those are the main apps, Microsoft Teams, Flipgrid, and Trello. All right, these are going to be the three apps that I highly recommend that you access and install on your phone if you can. You can access all of this information through your browser with the exception of Teams. All right, to my knowledge, um, I think you're not going to be able to access Teams uh, unless you install the app on your phone. I think uh, that will be a requirement. But Trello and Flipgrid you can access from your browser going to the browser and, and going to the main page of Flipgrid and Trello. Uh, again this is going to be if you have issues uh, adding these apps to your phone. Some additional apps that you might find useful uh, either for this class or maybe even from uh, for your other classes is OneDrive. Now remember that I mentioned that you can access all the files for our class within Microsoft Teams. All right, So probably OneDrive is not going to be necessary or a requirement for my class, but you still might find it useful uh, maybe in some of your other classes or for other purposes, maybe just private. Privately you want to create different files for your own purposes. Uh, you might want to install OneDrive. As students of the university, you're going to have your own educative or educational account within Microsoft 365, and that's going to include a OneDrive that allows you to organize your uh, your files, right? Much as you would on a local computer, on a local hard drive, you can access that same information in the cloud in your OneDrive. So you can organize around folders. Um, and one of the systems that I use that I find useful is I essentially create folders by letter, A through Z, and then I essentially include most of the folders and files that I have, I organize them in one of those folders. Now there's some exceptions here that I have, but for the most part I try to maintain this system, and for me it works quite well remembering where the content is um, if I organize it alphabetically. 
All right, so here you can also share files. We'll get into more OneDrive if we need to, if you have specific questions about how to use it, but this might be something that's useful to you if you're, for example, in a writing class and you're needing to access certain files for the class. OneDrive might be something that you might want to consider installing. Now, Microsoft Word, I mentioned um, a writing class. It's likely that you'll be sharing Word documents. And uh, so here, if you want to actually edit a document and work in a document, probably a phone's not the, the best way to do that. Uh, but certainly it is an option. If you need to access a Word document, uh, you can open up this app on your phone and open up a Word document and edit the document within your phone. Okay, so again, it's not required for this class but it might be something useful uh, in other classes. Microsoft Stream all right, is very much like a, a YouTube type of uh, service. It's a video service where you can access videos and all of the classes that we are going to have online, any classes, any live classes that we have are gonna be recorded and they're gonna reside in Microsoft uh, Stream. So if you miss a class or if you just simply need to go back to a class where we talked about something and you need further review, you can access all of the classes in Microsoft Stream and this is where you can access that information. Again, this is if you feel that you want to access these videos on your phone quite easily. Uh, this is going to be an app that you'll find useful. If you don't want to install the app and you just want to access Stream, you can also go to Microsoft 365, the, the main page, using your browser, and select Stream. Okay, there's a Stream service here that you can access, and uh, you should be able to access uh, the video content using uh, your browser. Okay, so Microsoft Stream is going to be another app that I think is useful. And that's basically it. YouTube is probably already installed on your Android device, and so uh, we'll be using YouTube quite a lot as well. But I think that app is already installed for, for most of you already. And that's basically it. I think these are the main apps. Again, Microsoft Teams, Flipgrid, and Trello are going to be the three big apps that uh, I think you're going to find most useful. When we get started, I want to make sure that everyone uh, realizes that I know that at the beginning it seems like we're using a lot of apps and a lot of technology here. So don't feel overwhelmed. If you have any questions or issues about technology, uh, let me know. Of course, we're going to be meeting daily online, but you can also send me a private email. Remember in Microsoft Teams, the best way to send me a message is by, uh, by Microsoft Teams going into the chat feature and sending me a, a private email. If you go into chat, you click on the icon at the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you type in my name and you should be able to have access to my, my email. And it's not really an email, but essentially it's my chat contact information. You can send me uh, a request if you have doubts or problems accessing some of the technologies. Again, this is going to be the best way to contact me. I would ask that you not send me emails only because uh, for me it's much easier to organize all of my correspondence from, from all my students in Microsoft Teams. I spend most of my day in Microsoft Teams already. much uh, I spend much more time in Microsoft Teams than I do in my email. So again, the best way to send me a private, e private message is through Microsoft Teams using the chat feature. So if you have any questions about technology, especially the mobile apps, uh, let me know. Uh, and don't feel overwhelmed as we get into using these apps. You're going to become more familiar and again, some of these options that I've, I've been talking about, uh, you, you, you won't have to install Flipgrid, for example, or Trello on your phone if you don't need to. It's just going to depend on uh, the equipment that you're using and your own personal preference. All right, I'll be creating a video later 
on that shows what all of this looks like on your desktop computer and uh, other videos will be uploaded later that relate to the class on trying to get you oriented into the course content and how we're going to be working towards the course objectives. So again, I want to welcome everyone to Listening and Speaking for this fall semester 2020. I look forward to getting started and uh, getting uh, to know you as we begin the semester. Again, the, the, the main thing I want you to remember is if you have any questions or doubts about what we're doing in class, that you reach out and ask for help. All right, so we'll conclude today's video there. Again, welcome, and we'll talk to you soon.